five. And welcome to the Yarn Journey Crochet Podcast. I am your host, Holly. Sorry for the wobbliness. <clears throat> I am your host, Holly. I live in Virginia with my husband, my two kids, my cat, and my dog. Sorry for the adjustment. Um, I just wanted to say welcome, all new viewers, and welcome back to returning viewers. As you can see, different location. Um, <laughs> this is the fifth time I've tried to record this podcast. <laughs> Let me explain what happened. <laughs> so the first time I recorded usual, usual spot. I am actually in my kitchen right now. I am enjoying a cup of hot lemon tea because lemon is just my favorite, like my candle right there <laughs> is actually lemon pound cake and it smells delicious. I made it myself. Um, that was part of my failed candle business attempt. <laughs> So I will explain to you why this is the fifth time I've tried filming this podcast. So attempt number one, I didn't have enough space to save it on my computer. So I deleted a bunch of stuff, you know, cleared out all the stuff that I wasn't using and <laughs> kept trying to save the video and it would not save for me to save my life. Like it just wouldn't, it wouldn't save. So I was like, fantastic. I have to film it over again. Then after three interruptions from Emma, busting in on me, wanting to sit on my lap, letting dog in and out, movie in the background with um, <clears throat> fears of being copyrighted. So the video would end up being taken down. Then fourth attempt, did the whole video, whole video, and when I went to take the picture for the thumbnail, I realized I had lipstick on my teeth the entire podcast. And with the way my computer is set up, I have a Chromebook. So um, you can't just record on a normal, your normal camera. You have to download an app to record your film. And right now I am looking at myself in a box this small. So obviously I cannot see my teeth, which I'm double checking. Okay, I'm good. I even took my lipstick off so it doesn't happen again. Um, so after sitting in that uncomfortable wooden chair for th over three hours, it took me because the first podcast was over an hour long and the second one was about 45, 50 minutes. And with all the interruptions and getting up and down and doing this and that, I was in there for about three hours. And I, here I am, attempt number five, trying to do this. And I decided I'm going to sit someone, sit somewhere a little more comfortable. So I got a squishy office chair. And I am recording in my kitchen because this is the only place at this point that has decent lighting. Um, I have two windows on either side of me, so... You can see this one right here, and then there's another one right here. So hopefully you can see my face. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's get started, shall we? Um, I do have a Ravelry group called the Yarn Journey Crochet Podcast group. It's on Ravelry, and I post all the show notes there as well as all the show notes below in the description box with all the links to the items I am talking to if there are links available to it. So that being said, let's do a little admin, shall we? Um, we have the Honey Blossom Cal going on right now and um, we have about 10 days left. I'm filming this on Saturday, so 11 for me, but you guys will see this on Sunday or whenever you decide to watch it, but it goes up on Sunday, so 10 days from Sunday. Um, we have 10 days left. We have some amazing prizes, two of which are yarn prizes and another two, which are pattern prizes. One that was generously donated from Evan Gay's podcast, which is, um, oh my God, I'm totally blanking on names. 
I can't remember anybody's name. Like I will watch an, a, a podcast episode and I will hear them say their name and it registers by the end of the podcast. Don't remember their name. <laughs> so, um, yes, Jody, there we go. Jody Fieldhouse of the Evan Gaze podcast. Um, generously donated a pattern as well as the Crochet World magazine that I am giving away. If I'm a little deflated, as I said, I, this is the fifth time. Um, I had plans to do a little photo shoot, put some stuff on Etsy, and that is just not happening today. Saturday. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to then to have everything on the shop updated on Monday. So I'm going to be putting, um, I know the cowl that I made and I'm going to do some extra colors. Um, I'm also going to be putting up stitch markers. So some of the stitch markers you will see in the podcast today will be for sale on my shop on Monday. That's what I'm hoping for Monday. If not Sunday, Monday for sure. <sighs> yes. So I wanted, so I love the fact that we have done the, um, okay, let me just, okay. So since we've done the um, small yarn creators hashtag, I have found more. There were about eight or nine more. <sighs> eight or nine more. Oh my God. On my last video, I didn't say the names on the podcast. I basically just linked all of them below um, because I finally got around to watching all the um, Yarn Creators podcasts and they're little, 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 little. okay. I finally got around to watching all of the small Yarn Creator videos from other podcasts. That's what I meant to say. Ooh, lemon tea can't go wrong with lemon tea and this sounds weird but I had lemon tea and I put a small amount of French vanilla creamer in it and it tastes just like lemon pound cake oh my god okay um <laughs> so I finally got around to watching all those videos and I found some and I put them in the last podcast episode well I I'm constantly looking for new ones because I love the fact that new podcasts are coming out because although we are far and few between, we are growing, but we are completely outnumbered by knitting podcasts. So here are five podcasts that I have found that have either recently popped up like with this in within this week, or there is only one that has multiple videos. Um, so the first one is the Pine Cottage. I found this this morning and this is what gave me the idea to find or to give more shout outs in the podcast because I have found her and then like four others. So the Pine Cod podcast, the Pine Cottage podcast with Nicole. Oh my gosh, she's hysterical. I was watching her videos and I was dying. It was so funny. Um, the next one is the crochet chain with Diane and she's actually running a mystery crochet along with shawls, not one shawl, not two, but six, six shawls. You buy the patterns, um, or you buy into the mystery cow and you get six shawl patterns for 12 British pounds. I'm not sure what that is in dollars. Um, we normally tend to be a little higher, so around like 13-ish dollars. So it'd be 1380 something, I'm thinking. If memory, if if I am being brilliant, it's 1380 something. Like it makes me want to say 1389, but don't quote me on that. Okay, next one is the cosmic crochet cop. Cosmic Crochet Crafts with Gigi. She has two videos out and she is new to the podcast game. So if you like, um, go look at her podcast. We also have Melissa Crafts. Now she actually follows me and watches my podcast and got in contact with me on Instagram asking if she should put up a podcast. And I was like, of course, 
why not? Like the more podcasts, the better. So she put one up. It isn't a crochet podcast per se. She's going to have a lot of crochet, but she also knits. She sews. She does other DIY crafts. So go check her channel out. You may like it. Um, the last one is on hooks and needles um, with Nicole. Another Nicole. What's with Nicole's? My middle name is Nicole. I don't know. I think Nicole's are just crafty people. Um, she does a lot of cross stitch and embroidery as well as crochet. I like that because I too cross stitch. Um, I'm not a big embroiderer, like freehand. I have not tried that, but I am a cross stitcher. My, it's another skill my grandma taught me. Um, and I tend to do that more during summers because it's not as hot. You don't have big materials draped on you and your hands don't get as sweaty, which is my big problem is even if I'm working on a small project, my hands get sweaty from holding the yarn and I don't like sweaty hands. It's gross. So yeah. Um, so check hers out because she does cross stitch and crochet. Um, so yeah, check that out. Um, as you saw, I did a intro video blooper thing. Um, last week I was going to refilm my intro to my channel, which is basically just saying, Hey, this is what you're going to find here. Like me, hate me, see you later, peace. Um, you know, real quick intro to the channel. And I'm sorry, I hate pistachios and I can feel a piece like way back there just like hanging out. And that's really bothering me. Um, well, as you can see, if you watch the, uh, sorry, my hair is really frizzy because I took a shower and I did not straighten it. And so it's got the natural wave to it right now. And it's just. <sighs> so. <laughs> um, the intro video eventually did not go up because it was just all over the place. It was a hot mess. And as you can see, I messed up a ton. At one point, I even said I was the Yarn Joy podcast. That's Terry's podcast. I don't know what I was thinking. So. <laughs> That never happened, um, but you have a nice blooper reel to watch in some crappy quality camera. So yeah, that's fun. <laughs> so we've got to the yarn creators, FOs. Let's get into the crochet, shall we? I have two FOs. Um, I have to dig for them because I brought everything from my normal filming area into my kitchen because that's where I'm sitting. I'm sitting in like the, um, this is, I'm sitting at my kitchen table at the moment. Um, so first is the summer romance shawl, which I'm sure you guys are all tired of me talking about. <laughs> and here it is. Oh my gosh. Those colors are coming out perfect in this lighting. Oh my goodness. Hello colors. So this is the summer romance shawl that I am designing. And I have heard back from two testers. I am waiting for the other four. I thought I did five, but I did six. Um, so I'm basically waiting for them to write back with any edits that they saw or mistakes um, made. Um, one one tester has pretty much caught them all at this point. Um, but I'm just waiting to hear back from them and hoping to see some pictures because I do want to feature their, their pictures on my Ravelry post for it because I'm really crummy at taking beautiful pictures of things like Instagram pictures. I suck at them. So I'm really hoping to get, they have some beautiful pictures that I can showcase the design a little better. Obviously they're going to get credit for it, you know, but yeah. <laughs> this is it. And this is Karen Cakes in Fruit Cobbler. It is a beast. This thing is huge. Like it is so big. And 
this is the funny part. This is why I actually loved using the, um, the shell stitches as the border because I got this nice little like peak, rounded peak. But then as I was looking at this, I realized it looks like the bottom of a chicken butt. <laughs> like, you know, when you get a, a whole chicken at the end, right where the uh, butt's at, you get this little tail thing where they have the tail feathers coming out. Chicken butt shawl. That's what I should name it. Chicken butt shawl. <laughs> um, so I don't know if I said this, but the colorway is discontinued. They don't have this. But I would totally recommend doing this in colors that reminds you of romance. You know, pinks, reds, purples, basically like Valentine's Day threw up on your shawl. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is the finished shawl. It's huge and I love it. And I cannot wait to release this pattern. I am like chomping at the bit, waiting to hear back from testers because they have until March 1st to get back to me. And two of them finished it with like in a week because it is a super quick shawl to make. It's only three repeats of the pattern if you do it in worsted weight. I was going to say fingering. That's not true. Um, if you do it in worsted weight, it's only three repeats. And that gives you a monster shawl. Like it's a schlanket basically. Um, but it is so warm and toasty. And because it's a Karen cake, there's 20% wool. So even though you have that lacy design in there, it's still pretty toasty. So I'm hoping to have that released. Basically, once I hear back from testers and I tweak the pattern and make it look all pretty, um, it will go out for sale. Um trying to find my next finished object. It's small and it's in here somewhere. I just have to find it. Or do I not have it? Oh my gosh, it's sitting right in front of me on my chair. <laughs> okay. This is the next finished object. This is um, the Tasseled Mug Rug by Angela Plunkett. It was in the Crochet World magazine. Um, that was the December issue. And that is also the one that I'm going to be giving away. So you too can make this if you win that prize. So these are super cute. Um, the yarn I'm using is... I have to get it. The cream is Wool Ease in the colorway Fisherman 99. Um, I honestly don't care that it's made in animal fibers because, I mean, this is a, I believe this is a blend of acrylic and 80% acrylic, 20% wool. Makes sense. Um, so I honestly don't care if it's acrylic or animal fiber because my mug is just going to sit on it. And I don't ever make anything so hot that it will melt the acrylic. Um, I guess you have to worry about animal fibers getting into your drink, but a little animal fiber never hurt, right? The um, brown is Sayel in the colorway Cinnamon. Now, I had someone <laughs> actually comment on the last podcast that they have had this brand in their stash for like 10 or 20 years. So I don't know if you can even get this colorway um, or this brand anymore. Probably not. Um, so yeah, that is what I used to make the tasseled mug rug. Um, this was actually rehomed to me from my grandma. So that's probably why it is an older brand because my grandma has her own stash and who knows how long she's been hoarding her yarn. Um, so that was my last finished object. Um, I'm just going to put this over here and then take another sip. I am almost out of tea already. Mm, 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 mm. Okay. 
Next, we will move on to whips. Um, I kind of started some stuff. <laughs> um, so we'll go, we'll start with, let's see. Let me just move this chair a little bit more. There we go. So I'm not like reaching. This is the first thing I've been working on. The Emma shawl. Or, oh my gosh. I am going to be losing my light soon. So hopefully I can get this done quick. Um, this is the Emma sweater. Um, and this is in mainstay yarn which is the walmart brand and it is in medium gray heather and then this right here is red heart super saver stripes in parrot stripes now this pattern needs some tweaking um i need to get rid of this bit hold on I'm going to turn this overhead light on so you can see me a little better because because the sun is starting to set, I feel like I'm getting blown out even more and then it's going to go completely dark on me. So, keep going. so yes. Mainstay, medium gray Heather. Oh, I already went over the yarn. What am I doing? <laughs> so this is all I have left of that yarn. So basically it's going to take about a ball and a half of gray and then half a skein of the stripes so not a very expensive sweater to make um but like i was saying there's a little snafu here i have about half an inch too much material on the top of the <coughs> shoulder which meant the sleeve ended up being too big and in order to make it the right size i would have to like rapidly decrease and it would have made the sweater look weird <coughs> I have an animal fiber in the back of my throat. So I'm about three quarters of the way done with the first sleeve. I have about <clears throat> two and a half, three inches left on this sleeve plus an inch of ribbing. And then the next sleeve. And <laughs> I am a dummy. So last podcast, I was like, oh, I have to make every size in order to write up the pattern. And Kelly from... I'm yarn inspired was like, that's what the gauge is for. So you have to do the math. And I was like, oh, I can do math. I'm actually very good at math. I just don't like doing math. But um, so yeah, I just have to, she sent me a link and a picture of a book that she read and I just need to find something with sweater math and doing the gauge for sweaters because there's shaping involved. So you have to account for the shaping in the math. I found some stuff, but um, I just need to do some more research. I mean, for the most part, it's like a basic, like your chest is 100%, then your bottom is 90, and then 40 no, 40, 20, and then like 10 or something. So it's all percentages, which I can do that. I am, I, I can do math. Like, even though I dropped out of my math class in, the, in high school, but I was doing like, I only had to do math three years in high school and I decided to do four and I didn't even have to do the four years. Actually, I think I only needed Algebra 2 to graduate, and I was doing college algebra and then pre-calculus, and I dropped out of pre-calculus because that was just too complicated. I'm sure I could have got it if I really tried, but it was my senior year, and I was not trying to take a math class if I didn't have to because that's not fun. I don't like math, but I'm really good at it. So, yes, I just have to figure out the math in that, but I have to make sure that the sweater is completely perfect in the right, like, in the sizing and everything. So, I'm going to remake my son one because I plan on doing it anyways, and I will adjust his to fit better. So, 
the next one, like I said, I'm sure you guys are sick of hearing about it. Oh, 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 we're stuck. I am doing another summer romance shawl <laughs> because I need quite a few um, to show on Ravelry. And I also want to show that you could do it in different sizes. Randy from um, Random Randy's Ramblings. I got it right that time. <laughs> um, she's doing hers in DK weight and it is gorgeous so far. Like so pretty. Um, I'm doing this one in fingering weight. So I'm trying to, there we go. And I don't know if you can tell, there is glitters in it. It's sparkly. Yes, this is going to be super duper fuzzy. Crud muffins. Oh, wow. I mean, at least the lighting's good. I'm just going to be a little fuzzy. So this is the yarn I'm using. That is blowing out so bad. Like really bad. That's blue, by the way. There we go. That's kind of not even close to the color. <laughs> so this is Woltrum's My Melody yarn in Winter Wonderland number two. And you can, if you're in the U.S., you can buy it from, is that it? That Etsy account right there. Um, she is a um, authorized seller of Wolterm yarn in the U.S. And I really didn't want to buy it from Wolterm directly only because it's really expensive to ship because I believe it's from Germany and that is going to be pricey. So yes, that was the Christmas gift that my husband bought me. Um, and I totally love it. It is so pretty. So I totally need to get some more Woltrum. Only thing, Woltrum's yarn is not twisted at all. It's just loose strands all together, um, which I always split yarn. It never fails. So it's been splitting a lot on me. And the glitter in it, although completely beautiful, is a complete pain in my ass. I keep separating it from the strands or I'll get like a really large loop so it'll pull and then I'll get like this huge like loop like this. Like I'll get this huge loop like that with a straight piece like that and I'm like, oh my God, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing? So yeah. The next time I order from Woltrum, no glitter. All like I said, although it's beautiful, a pain in the butt. So that is my next one I am making and it is a gradient cake. So I am so looking forward to how it's going to look in a gradient and not like striping. That's cold and gross. Ugh. <laughs> Okay, so the next one I am working on is the Parker Cable Socks by, um, that's the wrong side. I'm trying to block out this, this huge glare right here. Um, this is by Lakeside Loops. It is a paid for pattern. It is $5. And I have a tendency... <laughs> To think I'm bigger than what I am. Like, I'm big, but I tend to think I'm huge. So when I went to make these socks, the medium sizes from size, excuse me, from size seven to nine. I sit at a nine and a half most of the time, depending on the shoe, sometimes a nine, other times 10. Like with heels, I tend to be a 10 because my foot's so wide. Um, um, but... I am loving this pattern, but like I was saying, I thought my foot was huge. So medium was size seven to nine. The large was 10 to 12. And I was thinking I'll do the large. It can't be too big, right? Like it'll be loose. It'll be like a slipper sock. So it'll be, it'll be good. Right. I put that sucker on. It was massive for my foot. And I was like, okay, I need to do a, the medium. So I did the medium. <laughs> Um, and I totally messed up on this cable 
right here. Like I was supposed to go over that way and totally didn't. And do I rip back? Of course not. Just keep going because it didn't mess up the pattern. I mean, I mean, it technically did the pattern of the cable pattern, but not the pattern that I was working, if that makes sense. Um, so this is Lion Bram and Dalla in the colorway Pegasus. And that is actually coming out pretty true to color. So... Um, this is what I had left from the dreaded Honey Blossom shawl that I frogged, well, that I tried to frog. So I'm sure people were probably thinking I was totally exaggerating. This is all I was able to frog off of it. That's it. This teeny tiny ball. That was all I was able to frog because it kept breaking. So this was like half a ball left and it was the perfect size for one sock. And I have another ball of mandala and it starts with the dark purple on the outside and moves into the light purple. And then, so two identical cakes. I was like, well, I will do two socks then. Um, I don't know what I'm going to do with the other half of the cake because that part wasn't really my favorite anyways. So I am making that. Yeah. So next step is knitting. So if you don't like knitting and you don't wish to watch it, you can go to this number right here on the video. And that will be when I am finished talking about knitting and move on to all the other random crap I'm going to tell you about. <laughs> um, so first up, I um, was working on my daughter's brighten my day wrap now she's only four going on five she turns five on the ninth oh my god i'm gonna have a five-year-old um <laughs> she turns five on the ninth so obviously she's small she doesn't need a full-on wrap or shawl so i shortened it and i'm going to make it a scarf and I saw this color pool and I was like, I'm keeping it. I'm totally keeping it. So last time, hold on, let me try and grab these needles and, okay. So last time I was here where this one starts, the little rose, which will be on sale on Etsy. <laughs> little plug. Um, so yes, that is where you saw it last time. And I've made all that progress. And two nap times worth of knitting. Um, now this one is a drop stitch and I have no idea how to fix drop stitches in garter stitch. So I am going to have to look that up on YouTube because uh, YouTube is like, you know, the second most used search engine, I, uh, I guess. Um, like Google's number one and YouTube's number two. <laughs> So yeah, I am working on this and that is highlighter bright. Just so you know, I mean, it's, the colors are coming out right, but the tone isn't. Like those are really, really bright. Like I said, highlighter bright. So the white that I'm using is Big Twist Value Yarn in white. And I am using, oh, I'm really blue. Why am I so blue? I am, and then Red Heart Super Saver in Day Glow. So, oh, there's a hair. Mm, yeah, approximately. So, I shortened it to make it a scarf, and I have no idea what, how long this is going to take. But I know I do want to add little tassels to the end, like cute little tassels. I'm normally not a tassel person, but I think that will be super duper cute. So next up is another knitted item. And Lacey from the Hooked on Owls podcast 
wrote me on Ravelry and <laughs> she said something super funny. I won't say it here because it could offend people. And I am someone that is not easily offended at all. There is pretty much nothing that can offend me, really. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm probably sure there is something that will offend me, but 99.9% .9 of things do not offend me. I just, I'm not easily offended. And she wrote me something that I about died laughing. And <laughs> the scene from Step Brothers with Will Ferrell and, oh my God, what's his name? I can't remember his name, but the one scene where they're in their room talking about their favorite things and Will Ferrell goes, did we just become friends? Yup. Like that instantly happened in my mind when she sent me that. So Lacey, we're best friends. You might not know this until like right now, but we're best friends now. <laughs> um, but we were talking about what we were doing and I asked her if her, um, sweater that she's making is easy or like fairly easy to do being a beginner because we're both fairly beginner knitters. She's, I think probably a little more advanced than me because she's actually made socks. I have not attempted socks. Um, but I decided, um, she was like, yeah, it's fairly easy. You should do it with me. And I was like, <laughs> okay best friends. We're totally doing it together. <laughs> and I decided I was going to do the sweater. And this is where I'm at. Basically, I just have the collar or the neck ribbing. Um, this is the flax. It's a sweater. It's a pullover, but it's just called flax by Tin Can Knits. It's part of their, um, simple, simple collection or beginner. It's a beginner collection for knitters who are beginner knitters, but want to make things like sweaters because not all sweaters have to be super complicated. Apparently. Um, <clears throat> I am using premier yarns, Deborah Norville every day in the Heathers. And this is oat Heather. Oh my gosh. My yarns always look atrocious. Like, look at that. It is just hot mess. Um, it is so soft guys. So soft. So on this pattern, it says for the size I'm making, it says cast on 96 stitches. Okay. I can do that. But then me being me, I was like, well, how do they want me to cast on? Do they want a knitted cast on? Do they want a long tail cast on? What kind of cast on do they want? And me, I don't like things being super tight around my neck. I just don't, never have. Um, and I was like, I want something that's going to be super stretchy. So it's not going to be tight around my neck. So I literally went on YouTube, you know, second largest search engine. And I searched stretchy cast on knitting. The second video that popped up was a very pink knits tutorial and it was called the German twisted cast on guys. I shit you not. I got it right in the first try. I don't even know how that was even possible, but I got it. And I watched the video twice and I was like, okay, that looks super confusing. I picked it up and just did it. I was like, I must have messed up. There's no way I did that right the first time. Watched it again. Did it again. I was like, oh my God. I just did a German twisted cast on. For the first time, first try, got it right. I was stunned. Pat on the back because I'm super proud of myself. Because there are some knitters on the knitting podcast that don't even do that type of cast on. <laughs> like most just do, I think the long tail cast on or I don't know. I don't know. 
they rarely ever talk about the cast on method that they use unless it's something like crazy like a german twisted cast on like what is happening am i becoming a knitter oh my gosh don't worry most of crochet will still say but i feel like i'm one of those people that i like to try everything i'm kind of like a jack of all trades good at everything but not great at one thing like i i can do everything but i'm not like extremely proficient in one i mean i guess crochet i kind of i'm good you know <laughs> but i'm not like amazing like someone's not going to see my work and be like oh my god that is the best thing i've ever seen crocheted you know what i'm saying I'm not winning any awards, basically. So I, I like doing new things. I love crafty things. I love learning new things. I'm a book hoarder. I hoard yarn. I love learning new things. It's just who I am. So yes, that is it for um, my whips. So this week was actually pretty big because, well, this week is kind of big. So today's actually my anniversary. I've been married for six years and me and my husband have been together for seven years total. So we're celebrating our six year wedding anniversary. Um, although we're probably not going to do much because we're broke. <laughs> Mortgage payment and all, you know. Um, we'll probably just wait until we get our tax returns to celebrate so we can actually do something nice for each other instead of here's a card. <laughs> um, and we also have my daughter's birthday and her birthday kind of takes front seat to our anniversary. So her birthday is on the 9th. She turns five and I am still in shock that she's five. That means this year I'm starting homeschooling. Oh my God. That's like another like stressor. Holy crap. Like I'm, the doubt is definitely creeping in of, oh my gosh, what if I fail my child? What if she doesn't learn what she's supposed to? What if I completely screw her up? Oh my God. Um, so yeah, that's definitely setting in. Like what if I completely fail her and she doesn't learn what she needs to and then she has to go to public school, which I am not ready for. <laughs> at all. One, because I don't like the United States public schools because they kind of suck. I mean, not everywhere. I'm sure there are places that have amazing schools. Um, but overall, our school system, I am not very happy with. So I decided to homeschool. But anyways, that's not what I was talking about. Um, this week is a big week because Emma cooked for the first time this week. She made her very first set of pancakes. Um, and that morning she wanted cereal, but we had no milk and she obviously did not want to have dry cereal. So we ended up making pancakes. We meaning she. <laughs> I pulled out the glass bowl because I didn't want her to drop it and it was big and heavy. So I didn't want that to break on me. And I got the water measured out for her and put it on the counter for her. She dumped everything in, mixed it all up. I double checked because I really didn't want to bite into a pancake and get a mouthful of like powdery pancake batter that was not thoroughly mixed. Um, so then we moved to the stove, 100% supervision. So I was watching her every move to make sure she didn't burn herself. Um, she poured the pancake mix. She flipped the pancake. She took the pancake out of the pan, put it on a plate, and then we ate. So I will actually post, um, put a couple pictures in and a little small video clip of her cooking.
I'm recording you cooking. Okay, you ready to flip? Good job. Look at that pancake. Guess what? I'm going to put this on the podcast. What? Yeah. We're going to show everybody that you're cooking. So say hi. Hi. Tell them what else. Hi. Say like our videos and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> Do it. You're being weird. All right. Get the plate. It's not ready yet. Say bye. Bye. So, little tidbit. I am not using my daughter to get subscribers, although it might seem that way. I'm not. <laughs> I mean, maybe I am, I guess, in a small way because I posted the video, but it was more of showing her cooking. But the reason why I said tell them to say or t tell them to like our videos and subscribe is because she likes to play with my phone and our tablet and she will record herself saying these things. Oh my gosh, I have 1310 subscribers. Oh my gosh. Hey guys, I'm I'm Emma. I'm doing this. Thanks for watching. Subscribe. Like all the time. Like we catch her doing this all the time. And I think it's so funny and I want her to say it so I can put it at like the end of all my videos because I think it's cute. <laughs> and she won't say it. She gets like giddy, nervous, excited, or as Pinkie Pie says, nervous sighted. <laughs> and that is what I forgot to show you guys. Oh my gosh. Okay. We'll have to go back to whips in a minute. Um, so yeah, that was, that was something new. Um, but before we go any further, completely forgot to show you guys Pinkie Pie. I knew I was forgetting something. I just couldn't figure it out what. Okay, so here is the bottom of the third foot, which Snowflakes will be going into the shop too. Another plug. Um, this is Red Heart Super Saver Baby Pink. And this is the bottom of the third foot. Now let me show you. <laughs> let me show you. Okay. Whoa, whoa. <sighs> oh. Okay. Number one, number two. <laughs> They're different sizes. <laughs> so I think what happened, well, one, I didn't write down what hook size I was using. So I think I used a smaller hook size on number two. And number one, because I was stopping repeatedly to write down what I was doing. I think the tension was off and stuff like that. And this one is kind of lumpy bumpy. This one is a little smoother for the most part. Um, but it's kind of lumpy right in here. But Randy and Olive from French Fried Crochet, they told me that when doing fiber fill in amigurumis, you want to pull the fibers apart instead of leaving it like a big chunk that you just grab out of the bag, straight, like pull straight from the bag and then just stuff it in there. You want to pull it apart so it breaks up that clump and it gives you a smoother um, amigurumi, which worked, but I think I just didn't stuff it right towards the top because I was getting anxious to finish this one and I was like, just stuff it, stuff it. <laughs> Um, so yeah, those two are totally not matching and I put it on Instagram and, um, Hannah from Cozy Crotted, oh my gosh, Cozy Cottage Crochet podcast told me that to make just another big one and another small one and then they'll match. So I guess then it would be a design choice and not a mistake. <laughs> so yeah, that's where I'm at with that. But my daughter has been like crazy insomniac and it's not been wanting to sleep. So <laughs> yeah, I have not been working on it and it probably will not be a uh, Christmas, a birthday gift. It'll just be a gift whenever it's done. Um, but anyways, back to what we were talking about before. Um, 
I noticed there are a lot of cowls going on. Um, like a lot, a lot. And it is kind of hard to keep track of them. I actually need to go through and literally write down all the cows that I have been finding because I want to participate in some. Um, but <laughs> I don't know where most of them are at. So I know Faye is doing, I think, one or two right now. Claudia is doing one from Crochet Luna. Rosina is doing the granny along. Michelle from Mickey Midge is doing the springtime cowl, which I am doing that one for sure. I already know what I'm making and it is adorable. Oh, it is so cute. Okay. So, <laughs> um, and then I'm also going to do the stranded podcast one. She has one going, I think until March. I'm hoping to finish the wraps by then. Um, she's doing a commercial, commercial, cow so basically anything you make out of commercial yarn you can um put in there for prizes so yeah i'm working on that um i'm just there's so many i know there's the ultraviolet cow terry from the yarn joy podcast doing one um the christmas blanket one which is super cute and i love the way it looks and I've done crochet or C to C before, but I'm really not a fan of it. I mean, it makes a pretty blanket or a pretty whatever you're making in the end. It's just the process. It's so repetitive. And although it is a graph gan, I am not a fan of doing corner to corner graph gans. <laughs> I'm just not. Um, even though I probably will make them in the future, it's just not one of my favorite projects to do. Um, so yeah, if you know where any of the, uh, some of these cows are coming from, like I know most of them where they're coming from, but like the ultraviolet cow, I know it was mentioned somewhere, but I can't remember from what podcast. Um, so yeah, um, I keep saying, um, um, I'm buffering. <laughs> I think that's it. I was actually making some cross stitch patterns or trying to make cross stitch patterns. Maybe I'll just make them crochet patterns of things that are like, you know, coffee, coffee crochet repeat or like wine crochet repeat because if it's not coffee, it's wine. Let's be honest. I mean, not everybody, but I love me some wine. So I was making some of those. And like I said, I'm going to have stitch markers and stuff like that in, in the shop, hopefully, on Monday. I'm shooting for Monday, if not sooner. For sure Monday, possibly Sunday. So yeah. Sorry, my neighbor. I can actually see into my neighbor's backyard and... <sighs> They're always burning stuff, always. These, these, my neighbors, I don't know them very well because they're the, my behind neighbors, um, but they're always burning stuff. Like all last weekend they were burning stuff. They started burning stuff partially this week and I'm just like, are you burning like records over there? Like. Are you burning the FBI's files for them or something crazy? Because I don't know how they keep that fire going. <laughs> um, burning Clinton's emails. <laughs> I'm sorry, that probably is going to offend somebody. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I couldn't help myself. Um <laughs> This is not political at all, <laughs> um, but that was funny. So yeah, okay, I'm done. I don't think I have anything else to say. Um, so I will see you guys all later, later. I'll see you next week on next podcast and hopefully I won't have to refilm it a billion times. So I will see you guys later, bye. Yeah.
I am always messing with my hair. I look like I have, um, I look like one of those grannies with the little, hi, sorry. <laughs> I am so random.